This is a tutorial all about how to configure and work with views in model driven apps. I'm going to teach you how to configure a view, including using all of the awesome sorting and filtering features. We're going to have a look at the different ways that you can use views in your app for basic lists, for reports, dashboards and subgrids. We'll come to that terminology and then all of the different types of views that are available to you when building your app. Let's do this. My name's Lisa Crosby. My channel has a heap of introductory tutorials for beginners. If you're not already across what a model driven app is and the core concepts there, go check out my beginner tutorial and come right back here as we deep dive into views. What we're looking at on the screen here inside the model driven app is a view on the account table, which is one of the out of the box tables that you get with model driven apps. And you'll see that this is called my active accounts. Basically, a view is just a definition of columns that you want to look at on the screen. You're defining which columns of your data that you can see, and you can have more than one of these. If I click here into this switcher, you'll see out of the box, we've actually got quite a list of different views, and we're going to create another one together here. So I can switch across to active accounts, and you'll see that changes a bit. Same columns, but now I've got more in there because the definition of my active accounts has a filter applied so that I just see the ones that belong to me. Whereas when we look at all active accounts, we're seeing all of those ones in the system. If I go through each of these, you can see that we've got the account name, phone number and so on. I've defined that or that's been defined out of the box and we can set up different views with different columns for different purposes. You can also sort and filter by these views. So you'll see this one here is set up to be in alphabetical order by the account name. Let's say I wanted to see it in alphabetical order by the city, then I can do that. Or I could go back and change this to be reverse alphabetical order. I can apply a filter here as well. So we could go in and say, actually, I just want to see anything that is in Dallas and apply that filter or get rid of that filter. And the filters and the sorting options that you've got available will depend on the data type in each column. If you're working with a date, you can do date ranges or you know anything before or after a certain date. If you're working with numbers, you can sort them in order from highest to lowest and so on. So as you start to work with this, this gives you the options to filter and sort your data in different ways and everybody's favorite reporting mechanism, export to Excel, single click. So a lot of people will use views as a really quick first line way of doing a report because you can just send it out to Excel that easily. So let's just put these back in the right order. <laughs> and if I click through and have a look at one of these accounts, you'll see that I've got contacts associated with that. That is also using a view. And we're going to have a look at that as we go through. That's called a subgrid that allows us to see a related data table and to view it according to the columns that we want. So we'll work on that one as well. You can also use views on a dashboard. So if I go through here, you'll see my dashboard. I've got a list of equipment orders that I'm working with together with a chart there. So this is also another way of thinking about views as a form of reporting or keeping track of what's going on. You can define these views and have them sitting on a dashboard. You can actually have more than one on a dashboard if you want to see lots of things. And this is a way of using a view that perhaps might be better than email notifications. You might want to say, you know, recent orders that came in or recent accounts that have been created and so on, rather than getting constantly pinged with a notification. So let me show you how we build it. As always, to make something for your model driven app, we're in the Power Apps Maker portal here. I am inside my solution and inside the account table. And what I want to do here is click on views. And this shows me the views that I'm working with. Now you'll see some different types of views there. We're just going to work with public views to start with, and I'll come back and explain what these other ones are at the end. I can go in and edit any of these standard views. So the active accounts or my active accounts are the views that we were just looking at, but let's keep it interesting and create a new one from scratch. So let's say I want to work with my major accounts and I've got the annual revenue listed in there. And I want a view that's just going to show me as a manager, perhaps all of the accounts that are worth over $20,000 a year. So let's pop this in here. So I give my view a name, which is the display name that we're going to see on the top and optionally 
only a description. Description can actually good practice if you are, if you can be bothered doing it. All right, so now what we have is a really easy to work with WYSIWYG. What you see is what you get. Editor, as I add my columns in, I can also see my data in there with what I'm working with. You'll see it starts with the account name. I can get rid of that if I want to, but that's pretty much a good a good starting point. And these are all of the columns that I've got available on that data table to bring in there. So let's say the first thing I want to have is the city. Now this is super easy single click. If I click once on that, it pops it into my view there. Did you see that? If I want something else in there, let's say I'm looking for the, um, the account number that'll do. Click that, let's add that one in there. If I can't find it immediately, because I'm cheating a bit here and choosing all of the ones that start with an A, if I want to put in something else and I can start searching for it, as I type for it, it will, as I type it, it will come up. So there we've got annual revenue and I can add that one in there. What else might I want to see? The account owner, perhaps. So I can go in here and just start typing. There we go. There's the owner and bring that across. There we go. So that's a good start. Now I can change my mind about any of these things. Let's say as I'm looking at this, that account number, it's not really so useful there. I can just remove that. I might decide that I want the phone number in there of the, the main phone number, and I want that in a different order. So I can actually just take that and drag and drop it to where I want it to be. Or if you prefer not to drag and drop, you've got the option to move left, move right, um, and do all those things. And again, get rid of it entirely if you don't want it there. Now what we can do is also adjust the width of the columns on the screen. So I might decide, you know what, this needs to be a little bit wider. Uh, I want to see a bit more space there and so on. And now I want to put them in a certain default order because I don't know what order that is, but that's not working for me at all. So let's set the default order to be this by alphabetical order. A to Z. So what I can do here is just click that sort A to Z and that's a shortcut. It's put in a sort over here. So it said we're sorting by account name. Let's say instead of that I wanted to sort by annual revenue. Let's make this one a bit wider so we can see the full column and what I'm going to do is sort this from largest to smallest. There we go. Now I can actually have two levels of sort here because when I did that, it replaced the previous one. I'm now sorting by annual revenue, but you'll see I've got an option here to then sort by account name, which is in alphabetical order after it's done the annual revenue sort. Now, this is just my major accounts. So perhaps instead of doing that sort, and again, I can change my mind here. Let's get rid of that one and just have it in alphabetical order. I want to add a filter and only see anything that's over a certain amount. Now, because I can see my data in front of me here, this makes it a bit easier. Let's say I only want to see the ones that are over uh, $20,000 a year, which is what I put in my notes. So we can go in here, edit the filters, and this allows us to build a query here. So what I'm going to do is say, I want to add a row and I want the annual revenue. And again, I can just start typing it to make it easier for me to find it. There we go. Annual revenue is greater than or equal to $20,000. And now I've got that filter applied. You'll see that little icon there and I'm just seeing those ones in the list. So the other thing we can do here is to add in columns from a related table. So if I click across to here, you'll see that I've got all of the different tables that are related. Now, just word to the wise, if you've started to type, just get rid of your filter before you start doing this. At any point, by the way, if you can't see what you're looking for, make sure you haven't got a filter on there. And also in the drop down here, you've got the option to look at either all of the available columns or just the standard ones or just the custom ones, which can help you find things more easily, but is also a trap if you forget to switch that back to where you were. So just always be aware of the filtering and sorting that you're doing here. So let's say I wanted to bring in something about the primary contact. I've got an account here and I've got a main person who I'm working with, and this is my list of major accounts. And I want to see some of the details about that related primary contact person. So as I open that, I can go through and now I can still do that same thing of typing in here. So I can type in, I want the, the full name and let's add that in there. And let's say I also want to see their email address. 
pop that in there and so on. So I can bring those things across. I might also want to add a filter, for instance, let's say I had some that didn't have a primary contact person. So I only wanted to see the ones where I had that. Then I could go in and add a filter here and say, let's add something to do with a related table. So the related table here is that primary contact. And I want to make sure that the primary contact does contain data. That would be one way of doing it. So if there is no primary contact, then it would not be in the list. Or I could say within the primary contact, I specifically want to know, uh, does that primary contact have an email address? You know, I'm not interested in seeing anyone there where we don't have an email address for them so that the email contains data and I can save that. So you can apply different levels of filtering there. That's not going to weed any of them out, but we'll go back in and, and test that one out a little bit later. So you have all the fun, move things around. Let's just tidy up the, the width of this again, because we can see that these things are taking up too much or too little space on the screen. Get all of that right so that it's going to be nice and easy to work with. And when you're done, save and publish. So same with everything in a model driven app, we're always doing a save and publish step in there. Right. And we're done. Now you should have a back button here. Sometimes that's not on the user interface. If that's the case, just open another tab or close this one and go back to make.powerups.com and it's all good. Go back into my app. We're going to give this a hard refresh so that we can see our new view and navigate through to accounts here. And what we'll be able to see inside here, we've got my active accounts, but now I've also got major accounts. The other thing I should point out here is that you can pin a view along the way. So this little pin on the side as an individual user, I can choose to say that's the view that I want to come up by default when I use the app and I can change that pin at any point. So there we go. There's the view that I just created. Now, remember that we had that filter that if the primary contact didn't have an email address, it shouldn't appear on this list. Let's go adjust Nancy's email address and we will see what happens here. So we're going to go into her contact record. I'm just going to pretend that we never had her email in the first place. So she's now in there. She is still the primary contact there for AdventureWorks. But if I now go back to my accounts list, gone from the list. So that filter will just filter that out. Now let's look at how we can use a view as a subgrid. So if I go into an account here, City Power and Light, you'll see that I have a list of related contacts. And this is actually also a view. You might not recognize it that way because it's showing as little cards. But if I zoom down a little bit and you'll see it's a fully responsive interface. Aha looks like a view now, doesn't it? So a view can actually also, you know, depending on the, the format of the form there, uh, display as cards. But let's say I wanted more than that. That view is just showing me their full name and, and uh, email address. Let's say I also wanted to see their job title and their mobile phone and all of those things as well. And I want that to be in another tab here on the form. We can use a view to do that. So I'm going to go back into my maker experience. And this time I'm working on the contact table because I want to create a new view for contacts. So the first thing I'm going to do here is go in and grab my view, add another view, and we will call this contacts on account. I've got a description in there as well, and I will go ahead and create that. So what I want to see here is full name. Awesome. I would also like to see their, um, their job title. So we'll grab that one in there. I would like to see their phone numbers. So let's, uh, lots of phone numbers in here. We've got their business phone and the mobile phone and the email address would probably also be useful. So we'll pop that one in there. I would just like to sort, let's just sort that in alphabetical order there. There we go. All good. All right. Now I'm not putting the name of the account in there on purpose because I actually want this to be used as a subgrid inside the account and I don't need the account name repeated over and over again save and publish that as we always do. And then what I need to do is to add this now to that account form. So if I go back to my account form here, you'll see I've got tabs across the top, summary details and so on. I've got the contacts here. I'm just going to change this up a bit. So we will go back to our maker experience here, back into my solution and into account. And I'm going to find that account main form again. 
And what I'm going to do is add a tab in here. So I'm going to go and add a component, which is a one column tab. We will give this tab a name so that we know what it is. So we'll just click on that. We'll call this one contacts. All right, can move it around. And then within my contacts tab, I need to add that view. And that's called a subgrid because it's a uh, related grid, a grid of related records from another table. So we can go down here. I can just drag that subgrid component into there and it will ask me which one I want. It's easy if you just tick this. I just want to see the related records. And then I can go in and find my contacts related by the same company name and then which view do I want? I want the one that I just created which is the contacts for an account and done and we'll see that comes up there. Now a couple of other things I don't like this new SG control let's just hide that label and we can give it a nice heading at the top there. Save and publish and let's see what we've got go back into my account. Let's give this a refresh and we should see that new tab come up on the form. There we go. I can see contacts now. Now if I was doing this for real, I would probably not have it in both places. I would probably get rid of that one, but not really what I wanted to show you here. I can go in and now I have my subgrid view being used to display that list of records. And again, I could have applied all of those same sorting and filtering options if I wanted to, as you build out the form, and I'll do another tutorial on that one, then you've got lots of options there to be able to expand the amount of space and so on, if that's what you want to do. All right, so a couple more things just to point out to you before we wrap up. You have got options within the views that you're working with here. So if I go back into my views for accounts, for any one of these, you see when I first went into the app, my my active accounts was the default view. I can actually change that. So I can go in here and say set as default view, which would become the default view for the application users. Users can still pin the view that they most want over the top of that, but you can set the default view for the app. And you'll also see there's an option there to deactivate if there's something there that you no longer want in the app, then you can do that. Now, the other thing I promised to tell you about was these different types of views in here. So public views are the ones we're working with. You can also allow users to create their own personal views. That's within the security of the application. Each user has to have permission to be able to do that and then also permission to share it if that's something you want to do, which allows users to create their own personal views and share them with other users. Other options we've got in here are the advanced find view. Advanced find is a function that allows us to go in and do a proper query on the whole database. And that one sets up the standard columns that will be there when somebody does an advanced find. We have the associated view. If I go in here and have a look at this and we go into the related menu here and I have a look at related contacts, this is the associated view. It's just got name and phone number in there, but that is something also that you could go in and edit if you wanted to. We've also got the lookup view. So a lookup view, if I go again back into my account here, um, actually let's go into one of these contacts because from a contact we can look up an account. So here's my account name here. Let's say that wasn't there. If I click on account name and do a search here, this is my lookup view. So this is the name and the email address. So you can go into the lookup view here to change what that is as the default when someone wants to do a lookup in that experience inside the app. You'll see there it's got name and email and it's just showing you the first two in there. And the last one just to point out here is the quick find view. I tend not to use this one so much anymore because we're getting better global search across the whole of uh, model driven apps, which I'm using much more, but there is this ability to search here and the quick find view will determine what happens when you do a search here, which columns are actually being searched on and the column results as a result of that search. So there you have it. Now you know how to go ahead and configure views, filtering and sorting options, how to use a view as a subgrid to view related records on a parent table, and also that you can use those views in dashboards. Hope that's been helpful. Thanks for watching.